We are here with Dino Dini today. Thank you for talking to us. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Sure. And I would like to start with uh, a question about your session here at the GDC Europe. That is entitled Design, Constraint and Integrity. Yeah. Would you agree on the statement that the constraints of designing games are becoming less? Yeah. Yes, but um, that actually makes designing more difficult, which is one of the things that I'm going to be talking about. Because although um, there are a lot of constraints that are provided by the medium, we have to choose constraints when making a game as well. And the fewer constraints that you're given, the more choices and decisions you have to make. And the more choices and decisions you have to make, the harder it is to design. Do you share a personal um, passion for football? Do you play football? I don't play football. Um, I like watching uh, football, international football, like the World Cup. But that's the thing that, that sometimes surprises people. That you know, I made these games that many football fans and so on liked, and there were many who didn't like it as well. But I mean, that was a bit controversial, you know. But uh, hey, you know. But and then they're surprised when I say, "Well, no, I'm not really uh, passionate about football," and they, they don't understand. They, but because I'm passionate about design, so you present to me a design problem, and I, I'll solve it. So in this case, it was the client basically wanted a football game, but then I have to actually define what kind. So I wanted a football game that realistically simulated the feel of football. You went to I football thought, matches? Well, actually, a lot of it wasn't really so much even watching football because I'd already seen it. It was, it's up here. So, you know, you picture, right, well, what's the... Th and so when I looked at this, it was, oh, you know what? Um, there's a ball and there's a player and they're separate entities. So, you know, the ball doesn't stick to the player. And that was, in the end, the signature mark of the type of game that I made. But in fact, it just came from, instead of working, you know, it, it came from the source. It came from, you go back to the actual game and you look at it and you see how it behaves and then you try to emulate it. Sport is one of the more popular genres in, in, in video games. What does make this genre so appealing to, to players? And um, why don't they go out and maybe play the real football or the real sport, you think? <laughs> that's, a, that's a complicated question. Um, the first part of it, why do people find it popular? Because um, I think in a lot of cases, they look at, people look at sports, men and women, as examples of what can be achieved. Um, it's a bit, they're a bit like heroes. You know, it, it's, you could almost say superheroes, because, I mean, some of these people do things that, you know, but if you've got somebody who can run who's just beaten the world record at 100 metres, there's only one person in the world that's done that. Probability of, of uh, random of finding that at that time is one in six billion. It's, yeah. it's special. It's special. And yeah. people like, they like that. And I think when they play a sports game, they get a taste, a little bit of a taste of it. And, you know, even just a little bit of a taste of excellence is very nice. And I think that's what... That what makes, so, makes it so appealing. Makes it appealing. But there was a second part of the question, which I've forgotten now. Uh, yes, it was about um, why don't they go out and play the why real thing? Why don't they go play, play the real thing? Because that's a lot of work <laughs> um, and time. And maybe they look at it and say, well, there's no point in me going and really playing football because if I want to actually get even to a level where I get personal real satisfaction and enjoyment from playing it, I have to make my, get myself fit and I have to practice and it is like that. So I think uh, video games, it just allows you to sort of dip into it and get a little taste of it, but without having to, you know, put your heart and soul into it. Yeah, without having to sweat a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 uh, that's and all of that. Mind you, it probably would be a good thing if people actually went and did that more. Um, is actual physical interaction with a game the future of um, sport games? Sport games? Maybe. I mean, it all started really with dance mats, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and there is something appealing about that. I mean, as, as the future of um, gaming as a whole, I'm not sure. Um, because there is a danger that it's, it's just a, a kind of a fad, that it will pass. Mm -hmm. Stuff like the Wii, the Wii controller and so on, um, has proved incredibly popular. I don't know if it's going to sustain the industry, 
in the end, there's a certain convenience that is lost if you have to actually physically stand up and and do that. It becomes a different kind of experience. Maybe it will just be a, something complementary on yes. top of it. Yes, I think that's 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 its role. It, I, I don't. I'm not sure that the people are ever going to be playing. Um, I, I don't know real-time strategy games using using Wii <laughs> controllers standing there. I mean, it's conceivable. I wouldn't yeah, say it no. Could happen, it could happen. So maybe the Wii controller is like a wand. You know, you yeah. command your your soldiers, your, your whatever, your yeah. units using the the wand <laughs> over there. You know, I don't know, but yeah, it's it's just um, it's as you said. It, it's it's something on top of something it. Something on top, yeah. I'm going to ask you a difficult question, maybe. You don't have to answer if you want to be diplomatic. I would understand. Me, diplomatic? <laughs> I want to ask you about the panels here and the sessions here. The, right. Did you see if you have one that you really liked or one of your favourite? Well, I haven't seen them all yet. Um, I, I think I could probably make a general comment um, rather than, than on any individual thing. The, the sessions I like the most is when somebody exposes who they are. In other words, when they speak from the heart. Okay? Yes. When, it's, when it's reading from... When it's reading from slides or going through a process that seemed like a good idea yesterday. I mean, it's basically, are they present? Are they on the stage now, living in the moment, saying what they feel, and, you know, expressing whatever they want to express, whether it's joy, frustration, passion, that they're proud of the work they've done, which actually is not a bad thing, actually, to be, you know, proud of what you've done or ashamed of the things that didn't work. Just being real, being there, present, that's what I love. Uh, that's what I like to see. Um, uh, yeah. Yep. Well, it's been really a great pleasure talking to you. It's been a very nice interview, and I thank you very much for talking thank to you. us. Thank okay. you. Thank right. you.